On March 17th, the International Criminal Court issued an arrest warrant for Russian President Vladimir Putin. We saw this extraordinary move by the International Criminal Court uh, today to issue an arrest warrant. The International Criminal Court in The Hague has issued an arrest warrant for Russian President Vladimir Putin. The basis of the arrest warrant is not alleged crimes or atrocities that have been committed by Russian forces on the battlefield, but instead the alleged deportation and movement of Ukrainian children. The ICC's arrest warrant was based on, and supposedly corroborated by, a recent report done by Yale University's Humanitarian Research Lab, a lab funded by the U.S. State Department's Bureau of Conflict and Stabilization Operations, which was set up by the U.S. last year to assist in the prosecution of Russian officials. The Yale report alleged that Russia's federal government is operating a large-scale, systematic network of camps and other facilities that has held at least 6,000 children from Ukraine within Russia-occupied Crimea and mainland Russia during the past year. The quote investigation was widely reported on by the mainstream press. Moscow is conducting an extensive campaign to take Ukrainian children to Russia. Russia is reportedly taking Ukrainian children, thousands of them. Russia has been holding thousands of Ukrainian children. A new report out this week captures the scale of Russia's system of supervising Ukrainian children uprooted during this war. Actions, according to the report's authors, that constitute war crimes under international law. Well, it's certainly evil. I mean, this is truly sickening. I mean, this is sick. Nathaniel Raymond, the executive director of the Yale Humanitarian Research Lab, did his press rounds when the report was published and made some very serious pronouncements, comparing this movement of children out of war zones to schools and camps to massacres and the Holocaust. We're basically talking about thousands of children that are in a hostage situation. I have been a war crimes investigator for 24 years. I've worked on everything from torture to large-scale uh, massacres. Uh, this has been one of the hardest reports I've worked on because I'm watching a disaster that is a human rights emergency that's going to radiate for decades for these children. We are basically dealing with the largest network of children's camps seen in the 21st century. These bold claims, which led to an international criminal court arrest warrant, were based on, according to the Yale lab, quote, open source research, where zero interviews with actual victims were conducted, and the researchers didn't even attempt to see any of the camps in person. In order to translate and analyze their intelligence, according to the report, they used Google. They also admit deep within their report that, quote, many children taken to camps are sent with the consent of their parents and for an agreed duration of days or weeks and return to their parents as originally scheduled. But besides getting contradicted by their own report, they are also contradicted by evidence from the ground in Russia. The Yale researchers and the International Criminal Court are probably under the impression that no Western journalist has been to these so-called re-education camps. But that assumption would be wrong. I visited one of these camps four months ago, unaware that it would be so important to future war propaganda. In November, I was on assignment for Rebel News in Moscow. Mostly, I was doing streeters, seeing what regular Russian people thought about the war. But after meeting someone whose wife was pretty important on the Russian music scene, and after introducing myself, I was invited to an old Soviet air hotel in Pokrovsky. It turns out it was one of these so-called camps or schools that prompted allegations of kidnapping, abduction, re-education, and eventually, an ICC arrest warrant. Funded by the Russian government, this hotel was turned into a makeshift sleepaway camp for children from Donetsk and Lugansk who were interested in the musical arts and whose parents wanted them away from the front lines. They called it the Donbass Express. I was able to look around and speak to children and teachers. The children stayed in the hotel and the teachers slept in cottages that surrounded the property. Peter Lundstrom is a professional violinist and a teacher at the school. No, this school is called Donbass Express because here, right now, Благодаря поддержке государственного фонда президентского мы смогли привести сюда 80 детей из Донецка и Луганска. Это талантливые музыканты, которых мы привезли на 12 дней сюда. И вот здесь они живут все вместе вместе с нами, получают уроки у замечательных выдающихся преподавателей, слушают концерты, получают новую информацию. В общем, такая история. Конечно, конфликт повлиял на них, на многих, многие из них потеряли свои дома, многие, ну, некоторые, по крайней мере, потеряли своих близких. В зоне конфликта они фактически не могут продолжать профессиональную деятельность. В 
том же самом Донецке не работают ни филармонии, ни учебные заведения, ничего. Это все исключительно дистанционное обучение получается, что, конечно же, для музыкантов пагубно невозможно. Да, они могут вернуться. Мы надеемся, что очень скоро мы освободим Liberate Донбасс. И тогда они смогут вернуться к обычной жизни. For all of its serious flaws and lack of on-the-ground corroboration, Yale State Department report does get one thing right about the experiences of these children. The children and their families will keep the fact that they were brought to the Donbass Express secret because coming here to escape the war and safely play piano with other children would be seen by Ukraine as collaborating with the enemy. The report states, quote, many families in Ukraine do not want to publicly share their camp or school experiences because they fear they will be seen by Ukraine as collaborators with Russia. And that fear is justified, Peter explained to me. Чтобы вы понимали, что делают на Украине с такими детьми, как эти, с, лю с любыми людьми, которые приняли помощь от русских, они их просто убивают. Видите? Еще раз, до февраля, конечно же, было все тише, конечно же, не было такого сумасшедшего конфликта, работали в филармонии и так далее. Но то, что эти люди все время жили под возможностью смерти, это факт. То есть постоянно прилетало, постоянно. Вот. Особенно, конечно, 14, 15, 16 года, потом немножко подзатихло, но в целом угроза жизни была постоянно. Я здесь по, скажем так, приглашению очень такому щедрому, вообще не думал, что когда-то окажусь в Москве, побываю на концертах, на концертах многочисленных живой музыки. А живая музыка — это, прежде всего, духовное обогащение и очищение. И здесь, прежде всего, чтобы научиться и развить свои какие-то навыки, которые пока что только в задатке находятся. Я сам из... Донецка, Донецкой Народной Республики. А, что там происходит? Стреляют, а, впрочем, как и всегда, вернее, не то, что как и всегда, а впрочем, вот как и в последнее время пока что все потихоньку продвигается. Вроде как и меньше, конечно, обстрелов стало. Все равно, конечно, стреляют везде, и в Донецкой Народной Республике, и в Луганской Народной Республике. Но, тем не менее, люди все равно просто... Как бы не то, что даже устали, а просто хотят уже очень... Ну, мы просто мы продолжаем заниматься, несмотря ни на что обучаемся и находим этому время, естественно, потому что это то, что отвлекает от обстановки и окружающей. Ну и, конечно, The Yale report accuses these camps of trying to cleanse the Ukrainian identity from the children. They're doing re-education in the sense of sort of Russian-focused re-education. They're trying to make them into Russians. Is that right? Yes, which does constitute a potential crime against humanity. But from my experience, these children all saw themselves as Russian. They spoke Russian. In the past, their families voted to be a part of Russia, and they were happy to be in Moscow. The kids who are here, um, they consider themselves Russian, correct? Correct. Correct. Вчера они пели песню «Сюда приезжала группа Зверобой», и у них есть такая песня «Моя Родина». Возвращается, возвращается моя родина. И вот все эти дети, 8 человек, ее кричали. Просто кричали эту песню. Видите? But of course, with accusations of war crimes and kidnapping, all of the camps can't be as great and as friendly as the Donbass Express. Or maybe they can. I actually managed to get the executive director of the Yale Report, Nathaniel Raymond, on the phone. He told me that most of the camps are actually just like the Donbass Express, contradicting his dozens of media appearances. A large amount of the 40 camps are like the Donbass Express, cultural education. I would say like teddy bears. Like anyone with a war waging on their border, Peter understands that everything is political, but he explained that the school is constantly debating whether or not to bring the politics of war into the classroom. Ну, вы знаете, у нас тут есть даже дискуссия. Насколько мы можем... Дети приехали оттуда. Они знают, что такое война. 
насколько мы можем, например, говорить о войне с ним? Мы, которые на самом деле находимся здесь, это дискуссия. То есть насколько мы можем, насколько мы можем приглашать поэтов, которые читают про войну, например? Не будем ли мы на, на них давить слишком сильно? Мы об этом думаем все время. Ты такой кусочек приведить. А, конечно же, они здесь встречаются, они здесь находятся ради общения, ради музыки, ради любви, of course. Но, конечно же, они все понимают. Послушайте, война не закончилась еще. Мы это делаем, а то, что мы делаем, это не политический жест, конечно же. Uh, we are here not for saying, you know, I don't know, Russia forever, for example. We are here for help these children. But of course we are Russians. Uh, консенсус заключается в том, что от реальности не скрыться, не убежать, и это не нужно делать. Это первое. Мы общаемся с ними, uh, как со взрослыми. Но здесь мы не говорим специально о войне. Такого нет. Нет такого, что мы приходим и говорим, типа, как мы вас жалеем, ой, у вас там война. Такого вообще нет. Мы просто знаем, что это существует, но мы на этом не концентрируемся специально. I never asked them personally, like, okay, let's speak. Tell me, what do you think about? Mm -hmm. yeah, because, of course, I'm here like a violinist. Mm -hmm. I teach here, I'm doing all this festival program. They, and they know this, of course, they, yeah, I, uh, they, love, they love our professors, they love our director, who is просто душа компании, тут директор, который нас всем отвечает, они просто его обожают как брата. Они любят, любят людей, которые, они видят, что мы относимся к ним с любовью. Мы это делаем не в политических целях, это гуманитарный проект на 100%. Peter sees this war as more than just Ukraine and Russia. He understands that the U.S. and Great Britain are heavily involved in the events that led to the destruction of his homeland, Donetsk. We, we didn't start it. We didn't start it. This is, this is, uh, to, to believe this, it's, you know, you are a proof that you, are, you just don't understand what is happening at all, at all. Because uh, from 1991, uh, we're just going back and back and back and back. And For example, the United States is coming around us, around us, around us, around us. And uh, okay, this is, so say the truth to yourselves. You want to destroy Russia because it's too big. We have too many resources. We have too независимое, uh, как сказать, independent uh, policy. <laughs> Смотри, вот смотри, 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 см